Uh, good evening, councillors, staff, ladies and gentlemen in the gallery and those listening at home. Please be seated while Councillor Islam delivers the blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I start with the greetings. May the peace and blessings of God be open to you all. We always thank God for his blessings, and I ask the God, the Almighty, to give us a sincerity in our action, and I pray to God that decisions we are making tonight are good for the city and its residents. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Islam. Um, I'll be begin by acknowledging the Wajat Noongar people, uh, who are the traditional custodians of the land in which we meet today, and we pay our respects to them, their culture, and their elders past, present and emerging. It is now 6.59, and I declare the meeting open. Uh, just announce that uh, our former Mayor, Councillor Mayor Owen Searle is in the audience. Welcome, Mrs Searle, thank you. And I'll read the disclaimer. Members of the public are cautioned against taking any action on council decisions on items in which they may have an interest until such time as they've seen a copy of the minutes of the meeting or have been advised in writing by city staff. Record of attendance, everybody's here. Are there any disclosures of interest? Councillor Good has a disclosure of interest on item number 13.3.1 on page 24 as he is a member of the Gosnells Bowling Club and he occasionally socialises at the club. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, announcements of the presiding member. A few little things to announce and this is one of the little things. I attended the WA Seek Sports Association on the weekend where they had received a grant from the city to run a 17-team uh, gala day for hockey from people across Perth. And uh, the Seek Association team came second in the finals, unfortunately. But it was a good day and it was well attended by everyone and they've given us this memento. So that can go in the cabinet somewhere. I don't think we can play with it. <laughs> uh, also, we received a... Um, a very nice plate from the Intercultural Harmony Society at the Iftar dinner on Thursday night as a recognition of our collaboration with them for that event. So that too can go in the cabinet. And lastly, we received um, an appreciation from the Islamic Practice and Dawa Circle uh, for our um, support for the Iftar event at Mills Park last week. So we thank all of them for their gifts. Uh, today is Epilepsy Awareness Day, so when you leave out the front, you'll notice that the lights out the front are purple in recognition of that, and hence the colour of my shirt today. So we're proud to um, support and raise awareness for people that suffer from epilepsy. Lastly, I would like to congratulate uh, Director Blake and her team on the anniversary of 30, 30 years of Dr Pack, the Don Russell Performing Arts Centre. And uh, they had a lot of events on Friday just gone and they were quite enjoyable. And uh, special thanks to the Ookaroos for their musical talents and to Hayley Jade and other performers of the day. So congratulations, Director, on that one. And happy birthday to Dr Pack. Mrs Searle would have had a bit to do with Dr Pack in her time here as Mayor, no doubt. <laughs> Moving on, we have... Um, uh, reports of delegates. Are there any reports? Councillor Good, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, Council, I um, want to report on the Joint Development Assessment Panel uh, held a little over two weeks ago, or the last two weeks, I should say. And um, please report that a new development was approved by the Joint Development Panel, uh, which is actually now called Metro Outer Development Assessment Panel, for the construction of New auto. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Carry on. I thought there was someone's mobile phone ring time. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, uh, Range Ford will have the uh, development where basically where the Kenwit Link meets Albany Highway, but two blocks in, so not right on the very corner, but there'll be a relocation there. A development worth about $7.8 million. So three new car showrooms and service centre for Range Ford. So what it means for them and their staff is instead of having split operations along Albany Highway and Maddington, they can all move on to this new place. And of course, what I particularly liked about it was, uh, well, it's going to be a very attractive new building, but you can imagine coming in off the centre, the Kenwick Link, and this beautiful new building is going to hit you as a, as a marker. So I can imagine it'll be a, a new city landmark. So hopefully they can build it. Obviously they've got lots of staff 
uh, at Rangeford, but a uh, new car showroom and um, a very good development and was unanimously approved by the uh, dis development assessment panel. So very pleased to report that. Uh, thank you, Councillor Good. Are there any further reports from Dallas? Councillor Williamson, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, last week I attended the South East Metro Regional Road Group Committee meeting, um, which was held here at the City of Gosnells. Um, it's our first meeting since the election and I'm pleased to report that I was re-elected as the chairperson for the region and our director Martin Glover was also re-elected unopposed as the technical chairperson as well and we had Mayor Karen Vernon elected as the deputy chairperson. Um, part of our meeting we considered how projects we're tracking and we've seen a real increase in the performance of the subgroup and we're now at 66% recouped which is really great and it's a testament to Martin's work chasing up um, different claims and being a, um, an inspiration for some of the other local governments and a fountain of knowledge. <coughs> Um, we also had an update on the draft infrastructure plan um, for the grants and at the moment they've been endorsed by the Metro Regional Road Group and through SAC and they're waiting ministerial approval so we'll have some good projects coming out of that. Um, we also ran an induction um, for all the newly elected members um, to the subcommittee group and just basically ran through what our responsibilities were and how the regional road groups actually work. So it was a great session. Um, we had record attendance. Um, we even had to expand the room out. It was that full. So thank you, Martin. Uh, thank you, Councillor Williamson. And my understanding is that you put significant effort into the presentation of the induction, so thank you very much for doing that. I'm sure it's appreciated by the whole corridor um, that attended that meeting with you. So well done to you. Uh, no further um, reports. We'll move on to question time. We just have a question. And we've got two questions from Mr Leon Walker. If you'd like to... Come forward, Mr Walker, thank you. Three questions. And we have time for you to ask all three questions tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My first question is, would a complaint about the loud voices, both spoken and sung, including singing along to Dr Hook's cover of The Rolling Stone and John Denver's Take Me Home Country Roads, which emanated from Unit 31, 99 Stafford Road, Kenwick, in the early hours of the morning of March 16 last, would that be a police matter or a matter for the City of Gosnells? We'll get the uh, Director for Business Services to give you the technical response to that question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I guess technically uh, police and our environmental health officers have the same powers under the noise regulations, but for out of hours parties, obviously we don't provide a 24 hour service and, and if we did, I don't think that our guys would be attending without police. So really those calls outside of um, business hours and for things like parties and, uh, and loud music, they really matter, a matter that we would refer to police. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, next question. What distinguishes between noise complaints which come under the jurisdiction of the City of Gosnells from noise complaints which come under the jurisdiction of the WA Police? Uh, to respond, but I think you touched on it in the, the hours that it occurs, I, I guess, are part of the, the difference. But if you've got anything further to add to that? Uh, not really, Madam Mayor. Other, like I say, we, we both have the same powers in, in a theoretical and a legal sense, but in a, in a practical sense, um, certainly our environmental health officers won't be entering people's properties and seizing amplification equipment uh, in the early hours of the morning. That's something that we would um, prefer police with tasers and the like to do for us. <laughs> thank you. Your last question, Mr Walker, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Is the WA Housing Commission and or its agents and or its tenants exempt from the provisions of any act, any regulation and any local law relating to noise from premises owned by the Commission? No, they are not. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We'll now move on to uh, public statement time. Just the one or two. We've got two public statements, and um, just a reminder that public statements, you have three minutes to make your statement. I'll call forward Leah Zygleb. 
Leah from 14 Gosnells Road East in Martin. Thank you, Leah. This is item referring to item number 13.2.1, which is on page five, page five of the agenda. It's a development application for the proposed commercial vehicle parking and sea container. Thank you. Is that on? Yep, hello. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and Councillors. My name is Leah Sislak and I'm a proud resident within the Orange Grove community. I'm here tonight to ask you to reject the development application for proposed commercial vehicle parking and sea container for 91 Lot 1 Reservoir Road, Orange Grove. This application does not meet the criteria for general rural zone. The application involves keeping one prime mover and three trailers on the property. The applicant has failed on multiple occasions to provide the council whether the driver lives on the property. Therefore, the proposal cannot be considered a commercial vehicle parking and must be considered a transport depot. A transport depot is prohibited within the general rural zone under provisions of Town Planning Scheme 6 and the Local Planning Policy 2.1. The proposal cannot be approved. The sea container exceeds the maximum outbuilding area permitted under local planning policy 2.2 due to the existing outbuildings of the property and again the proposal cannot be approved. If you approve this application, what's stopping the floodgates of more people buying up the land because it's cheaper than purchasing an industrial block and moving their transport businesses in? The people in this community have purchased homes based off the zoning and want to live in a rural lifestyle. My partner Brad and I purchased our home almost eight years ago as we love and want to live in a rural lifestyle. We have a one-year-old daughter who will grow up living and thriving in a rural lifestyle where she can enjoy having a huge property to run around in with her dogs, going to collect eggs from her chickens in the morning, picking the fruit and veg from the garden we grow to eat, one day having her own horse to ride and enjoying the equestrian club we have here in Orange Grove. Our neighbours she can go visit and give the items we've baked or swap our produce because that is the community we have built here in Orange Grove. It is unacceptable people are expecting to come in purchasing rural blocks when already existing industrial blocks are for sale. Hoping to change the rules that fits their needs because the land is cheaper here. And not having care or consideration for their neighbours who purchased their homes for the right rural reasons. The staff recommendation is for the application to be refused. 18 submissions were received, all 18 objecting to this proposal. Please listen to your staff. Listen to the residents of the Orange Grove community. We want to keep the area rural. We want to live here for the rural lifestyle. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Leah. We now have Megan Gammon from 1 William Street, Perth, uh, regarding the Forest Lakes District Centre Precinct Structure Plan, which is item number 13.22 on page 13 of the agenda. Thank you, Megan. Thank you very much, Mayor and Councillors. Thank you for your time this evening. My name's Megan Gammon, Director from Town Planning Firm Urbis, and I speak in favour of the agenda item relating to the Forest Lakes District Centre Precinct Structure Plan. Greenpool Capital, the owner of the centre, has a vision for the centre which aims to deliver a diverse offering and create a strong sense of community. Following acquisition in 2022, Greenpool Capital is already delivering on this vision and seeking immediate investment in the centre. This includes the delivery of new pad sites, one in which was approved earlier this month, upgrades to car parking and plans for new, future new development. While there's been a focus on short-term improvements, the precinct structure plan that you're considering tonight sets a framework to revitalise and grow the centre over a period of time. This includes expansion and diversification of the retail offer and new uses within the centre, improving vehicle and pedestrian connections so it better connects to the wider area, as well as improving the look and feel of the centre through public realm upgrades and landscaping. At this stage, the precinct structure plan does not include any land for residential development. While state planning policy supports the inclusion of a residential frame area, through discussion with the city's officers and the Department of Planning, Lands and Heritage, agreement has been reached that this will be considered in the future at a point in time when an amendment to the city's planning scheme enables this. We'll actively engage with the city, including elected members on this in the future, which will need to be undertaken through a formal structure plan amendment process. We thank officers for their collaboration to date. We fully support the recommendation being presented to you this evening um, and look forward to finalising the document with the city and the department. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. That, that we have no more public statements, so we'll move on to the confirmation of the minutes. Can I get a mover? Uh, Councillor Adams to move that. Councillor McDonald to second that. Do you have any questions, councillors? Uh, could you please uh, cast your vote? Thank you. Thank you, councillors. That has been carried. Moving on to the receiving of the petition, uh, petitions and presentations. Receiving of petitions. Councillor Dewhurst, have you got a petition? Thank you. Thanks very much, Madam Mayor. Um, so, <clears throat> very short, very um, straight and, uh, and uh, direct petition to postpone the removal of the rose gum tree on Madison Street, Southern River. We had uh, five petitioners. And I move that the council receives the petition. Thanks, Madam Mayor. A seconder. I'm happy to second that. Sorry, <laughs> councillors, would you please cast your vote? Thank you. Thank you. That has been carried. Moving on, Councillor Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lyons. Malfunctioning microphone at the time. Uh, my petition is to install CCTV cameras at Kelvin Road and the Crescent intersection from two electors of the City of Gosnells. I move that the petition be received. Thank you. Can I get a seconder? Deputy Mayor Hortz, happy to second that. Councillors, if you please cast your vote. Thank you. That has been carried. Any further petitions or presentations? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Hortz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a presentation. Um, two pictures that I've received from um, local resident of Thornley, uh, Brendan um, Cherry, who's in the audience with us tonight, who advocated for new lighting on the intersection of uh, Karajong and Sugarwood Drive. And so he wanted to send his thanks through to the city staff that were involved, including Director Martin Glover uh, and, and his team who made that a reality with Western Power. So the, the presentation is a little unconventional because it's two images, but one is the before image of what we would consider an unsafe roundabout with, with inadequate lighting and now with a well-lit roundabout. So presenting that to the city, I've just emailed it through to you all, um, uh, councillors and directors, and a big thanks to Brendan for his advocacy on that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Hort. Any further petitions or presentations? No. Thank you. Moving on, applications for leave of absence. I have uh, one from Councillor Zhang who seeks a leave of absence from Council from the 13th of the 4th to the 30th of the 4th, which includes the following Council meeting, the 16th of the 4th, 2024, and it's for personal reasons. C Councillor Williamson's happy to move that. Can I get a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Dewhurst. If you could please cast your votes. Thank you. Thank you. That has been carried. There are no questions of which due notice has been given, so we move on to the first one, which is reports of the committee meeting, which is item 12.1, the minutes of the audit committee for the meeting held on the 5th of March 2024. Can I get a mover? Deputy Mayor Hort to move this. Councillor Zhang to second this. Is there any debate or questions on this item? Councillor Deputy Mayor Hort. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to speak in, in support of this and, and the revised terms of reference for the audit committee, which will become an audit and risk committee. It's an important step forward in, in developing transparency, developing accountability, uh, and ensuring we as a council have a better understanding of how the city works and what controls it has in place. So um, in support of that, obviously, um, appreciate your support for it as well. Um, I think it's a really positive step forward for our council moving into the future. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Hort. Councillor Baines, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have an amendment, please. Thank you. So I, Councillor Karen Baines, propose the following, that the staff recommendation 2 of 3 be amended by the addition of the following words after the text, Appendix 12.1A, subject to the comment against question 2 in the section headed tenders for providing goods and services being amended by... One, replacing the words two occasions with one occasion, deleting the following text. In the first instance, works were awarded to a contractor who was successful in tendering for the city's minor, work, minor civil works contract, 
However, the works for these projects exceeded the scope of the minor civil works contract and should have been tendered independently. Um, point three, delete the words in the second instance at the beginning of the third paragraph. Continue? Yep. Yep. For the following reason. Following consideration of the compliance audit return by the Audit and Risk Committee, the officer who manages the minor civil works contract expressed concern that the contract had been interpreted incorrectly as part of the audit. The interpretation related to the value of works that could be awarded under the contract. The finding of the audit, uh, the finding in the compliance audit return was premised on a way that the maximum value of projects that could be awarded under the contract was $250,000. The executive team reviewed the relevant contractual terms at its meeting on 25th of March and concluded that this understanding was not correct. The contract states, the works undertaken as part of this contract will be minor in nature, with each individual project's value likely to be less than 250,000, excluding GST. The statement was included in the contract to give potential tenderers an understanding of the scale of works to be completed under the contract to assist them in determining whether to submit a tender. The statement means that most of the works offered under the contract will likely, but not always, be less than 250000 in value. Had the 250000 been intended as the maximum value of works that would be undertaken under the contract, the contract would have said, the contract will cover civil works with a value of up to $250,000. As such, there was only one instance identified where the city did not invite public tenders when it should have, rather than the two instances as reported in the compliance audit return. The compliance audit return should be amended prior to being submitted to the department. Uh, thank you, Councillor Baines, I'm happy to second that. Is there any further discussion or questions on this item, any debate? No, councillors, if you'd like to cast your vote on the amendment, thank you. Thank you, councillors. That has been carried. We'll now put that back to with the original item. Is there any debate or questions on the original item? Councillors, if you please cast your vote on the original item together with the amendment. Uh, thank you. That has been carried. We move on to item number 13.2.1, the development application for the proposed commercial vehicle parking and sea container at 91 Lot 1 Reservoir Road, which is the corner of Grant Street and Orange Grove. Can I get a mover for this? Councillor Betts to move this. Councillor McDonald to second it. Councillor Betts, would you like to speak to this item? Just briefly, uh, Madam Mayor, I think that uh, if this um, application had been for an owner driver with their own truck that they drive daily, I think we, I would certainly be happy to support that, but certainly not a transport depot with three trailers and, and that. So I fully support the staff recommendation because I believe that the rural area should remain as rural as we possibly can keep it and uh, this just doesn't fit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Betts. Councillor MacDonald, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would also just like to uh, endorse the recommendation by the staff and congratulate them on the research and uh, detail that they've gone into in, in um, uh, dissecting all of the issues involved. And I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, residents who put forward their uh, information uh, to us to help us in our consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor MacDonald. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hort, then Councillor Good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's been a while since we've had one of these DAs. I've been on council just over four years and it felt like they were coming thick and fast when I first arrived here. Um, it's so important that we preserve the rural amenity of this area. It's an important part of the broader Perth landscape, but an essential part of the city of Gosnell. So um, I just want to applaud the staff. I think they've made the right decision and I'll be supporting it. Um, I think we need to send a clear message to people out there who might be considering this kind of activity that it's not what we're after in the rural area. And I think for show of support from the rural community here today, the Orange Grove and Martin community, 
backs that up as well. So it's not acceptable. Um, we won't allow it. And, and I'm looking forward to compliance action happening more broadly in that area anyway, um, to make sure that Orange Grove is maintaining the, uh, the rural amenity that we sought out, sought in LPS 24 and created. We worked really hard. The city staff worked really hard. We as a council worked really hard to make, that L make sure LPS 24 was containing non-rural activity uh, as much as possible. So uh, well done to the city staff and I will uh, be supporting their recommendation. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Hort. Councillor Good, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lyons. Everything I was actually going to say, um, Deputy Mayor Hort's actually said it and Councillor MacDonald also said it and so did Councillor Betts. But um, I also wish to, one, uh, congratulate the officers for their report, um, well done. And again, also um, really congratulate the the young lady from public statement time because I thought she spoke beautifully and presented the arguments that we tend to all think should apply. Um, Deputy Mayor Hawke made the point of it hasn't been many applications of late and you're right, you think sometimes how do you send the message when it's very clear, it's rural, Orange Grove is rural, don't do a commercial activity, it's that simple. So hopefully if this does send a message so be it but I will strongly endorse the staff recommendation and I congratulate the young lady for the public statement, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Good. Is there any further debate or questions on this item? Councillor Dewhurst, thank you. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Certainly, um, uh, Orange Grove sounds like a wonderful place to live. Listening to Leah's statement, I was just waiting for uh, um, Sleeping Beauty to start singing with the little birds coming on the finger. And, and that, um, I'm a fellow um, uh, rural owner uh, up in Martin, so um, I totally agree. You've got to keep rural rural. Um, that's why people build it. It's God's country out here, I believe in our rural area, so we need to maintain that. Though um, I, do, I do feel a little bit for, for the applicant, but um, they certainly haven't helped themselves in, in any way. I mean, I like pushing the boundaries when people come and see me when they're sort of pushing policies, and I see the Director of uh, um, Planning <laughs> Development having a bit of a grin there, because I'm always at him, you know, um, over the years that I've been here. You know, I've pushed for larger outbuildings, I've pushed for larger um, granny flats, um, and with the support of city councils, we've done that. Um, sea container policy has been changed. We've done a lot in the rural community, but um, uh, but I couldn't probably, I, I couldn't, not probably, I just couldn't argue for this case at all because they certainly haven't helped themselves. It's not what, what people want. It's not what I want to see in rural areas. So um, obviously the council that has spoken so far is um, in support of the recommendation, which I'll be as well. So thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Dewhurst. Councillor Williamson, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have a question for the Director of Infrastructure. Um, in relation to the rural area and advising property owners that it's rural, earlier in the year we received a request from a resident about signage into the rural area um, so that there were no mistakes made by anyone coming into the area to purchase land, that, that Orange Grove was definitely for rural, rural use. Could we have an update? Thank you. Understanding that is progressing quite well and uh, no doubt Director Brad Brook will let us know what's going to be on those signs as well, maybe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I can't remember the exact wording of the signs, but it is certainly about um, uh, identifying Orange Grove as a rural area and uh, let, making people aware of the types of uses that are not permitted. Pretty sure the signs have been manufactured and they, um, if they haven't gone up yet, that must be fairly imminent, so I'll follow that up for you, Councillor Williamson, and I can let you know tomorrow when they will be installed if they haven't already. Thank you. Anything, anyone have any further debate or questions on this item? Councillors, you please cast your vote. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Go on then. Um, so that has been supported. The officer's recommendation has been supported to those of you in the gallery that came for this item. You are welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to make your way home as well. So it's up to you. Uh, moving on to item 13.2.2, the Forest Lake District Centre Precinct Structure Plan for 3, Lot 201, Finsbury Drive, 115, Lot 102, uh, 119, Lot 101, 125, Lot 108, and Lot 13, Murdoch Road, and 97A, Lot 1, 97B, Lot 3, 97C, Lot 2 and 95, Lot 8, Forest Lakes Drive, Thornley. Can I get a mover? Councillor, Councillor Good to move and Deputy Mayor Hort to second that. Councillor Good? Sorry? You can't hear me. You are not. 
Just if you'd like to just read 13.2.2 if your own... Do you want me to wait for you to read that one? Did you want to read 13.22 while we wait for... Just if you couldn't hear me, that's all. Oh, OK. OK, I think, I think they're right now. Councillor Good has moved it. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hort has seconded it. And Councillor Good will be now speaking to it. Thank you. I was just pausing, Madam Mayor, just to allow those to want to leave the chamber so everybody yep. can hear nice and clearly for the background noise. Uh, like Councillor Dewhurst, I sometimes also think I need to hear better. So there we go. I might have to get some aids. Um, on this motion, just terrific amount of detailed work has gone into it. Um, I don't live near there now, as far as really close. I used to live 500 metres away in Forest Lakes area up until about 18 months ago. I now live in Canning Vale, but I actually shop there regularly. It's got so much potential, the uh, Forest Lakes District Shopping Centre, in terms of when I first got there, it had just Coles and Woolworths moved in, then Aldi, I think, in 2018. So the potential there to go from, well, another almost another 10,000 square metres of space um, the density of the area has improved. There's so much potential. So I just congratulate the staff. I'm fully supportive of it. The, the gentleman who, I should say, the, you know, the gentleman who spoke about it, um, I lose track. But um, it was just very well um, argued in terms of what we're there for. And uh, the fact that the area is being more, uh, being developed more dynamically, if that's a word, to say, hey, we're now offering this, this and this. And even the amount of businesses that have come in the last five or so years, it's just great. Great to see the employment opportunities. People can now shop there. And instead of leaving Gosnells, is what I'm getting at, and going to either Cannington or somewhere else, you can actually get a lot of stuff in Gosnells. And I noticed the other shopping centres, I'm looking forward to Mayton Central one day doing an upgrade, but great for Forest Lakes, great for the area. I certainly shop there regularly. I'm sure a lot of the other Thornleyans, I was a Thornleyan, but uh, in the area would probably support it. So just and great work to the staff. So I recommend it. So good. Um, who seconded that? Count, uh, Deputy Mayor Hort, if you'd like to speak to that, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, yeah, I won't, <coughs> I won't go over uh, Councillor Good's points again, um, uh, but just to say, look, this is my local shop, so I love it. Uh, I really, really like this design. I think it's fantastic, and I'm very excited to see it come together. Um, so well done to Urbis and, and to the owners. It's a noticeable change in, in the dynamic since the new owners took over in 2022, and I want to applaud them and their investment in, in the city of Gosnells and into Thornley. Um, one thing that did come up in the community consultation that I got a couple people contact me about, I didn't see it anywhere in the plan, but I just want to make sure it's crystal clear here tonight, is does this plan outline the demolition of any homes, Madam Mayor? We'll get the uh, director to um, respond to that. Not that I saw any, but uh, maybe... It's a simple no, yeah. Madam Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted that to be on the record because I didn't read that at all, but there was certainly some rumours going around. So very supportive of this. I love every element of it, especially the fact that no homes are being demolished. I think it's a, it's a lovely win for the Thornley and a, and a lovely win for the City of Gosnells. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, um, Deputy Mayor. I imagine it's some of the shading that they did in the, in the planning that looked like maybe those homes were to go, but they're definitely not. Uh, Councillor Dewhurst, thank you. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, um, the city's going strength to strength. You know, IKEA up at Beckenham. We've got Varsity Bar up at Beckenham. We've got... Lots of things. Lots of things going on. It's not sort of gone dead. Um, <laughs> Southern River Shopping Centre, what's happening through there. We've got great things happening through Southern River. Gosnell's Business Park. We've got... Oh, there's lots of things happening there. So it's absolutely wonderful. And, I mean, I was already sold in this, but until I heard that fellow come up and speak tonight, I, um, <laughs> you know... No joke. I, um, I just wanted to say to, to Councillor Good, it was actually a, it was a, a very lovely lady who came up and spoke tonight, and, um, and, and he knew that. It was just, yes. it was just a, a faux pas. So. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, a, a, um, it's certainly good. I, I'm really looking forward to it. I, um, I, I, I don't shop up that way because it's too far for me. Um, I've got to stop at a roadhouse on the way through there, but it's, um, it uh, certainly is going to add value to the uh, area. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dewhurst. Um, I'm sure that Megan in the gallery has appreciated your sense of humour. We <laughs> hope, anyway. <laughs> uh, moving on, is there any further debate or questions on this item? Right, councillors, will you please cast your vote? Thank you. Thank you. That has been carried. Moving on to 13.3.1, the Community Sport and Recreation Facility Fund small grant round for March 2024. Councillor Adams to move that. Councillor Williamson to second that. Any questions or debate on this, councillors? Councillor Williamson, thank you. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to congratulate the staff for putting together this application for grant funding. I think um, both parties involved, both clubs, will be very appreciative. And it was great to read in the report that the Huntingdale Junior Football Club has 25% of um, female participants. So it's a really great move for sports and it'll be good to have this additional lighting. And it's great to see things progressing under the master plan as well, which this is all part of. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Any further questions or debate? All right, councillors, will you please cast your vote? Thank you. Thank you. That has been carried. Moving on to 13.3.2, the report on the petition for the street tree removal and replacement along Lower Hall Gardens, Aldenham, Aldenham Drive and Streamside Street in Southern River. Can I get a mover? For this, Councillor Adams to move this. Councillor Dalton to second this. Councillor Adams, would you like to speak to this? Councillor Dalton, any further debate? Councillor Dewhurst, thank you. But it's just a couple of questions. Um, in regards to Chinese elms, are we still planning them from the city? And if our developers putting them in, are we stopping them? What's the go? Thank you. And I, I'm hoping the answer is no, but I will ask the Director for Infrastructure to confirm that. Thank you. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, my understanding is we're not either recommending or planting Chinese elm at the moment, but I will double-check. Okay. Thank if you. a developer's doing development, um, are they likely to put Chinese elms in there? Uh, does that something come through to the city? I think the landscaping plan, Councillor. I'm sorry. <laughs> Director Terrellink, if you could respond, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. If it's uh, a subdivision, uh, landscaping plans need to be lodged with the city for approval so we can look after things there. And if it's a development application, similarly, landscape plans need to be lodged as well, so we look at species there. So last question is then, if something comes across like that to the uh, planning department, would they accept Chinese elms in our city now after all the dramas we've had? Thank you, Linda. Um, Madam Mayor, there might be some uh, occasions when some species are appropriate depending on location rather than others, but our landscape architect is um, famously vigilant about that kind of stuff. So um, I'll talk to her and we'll keep an eye on that. Very happy. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Dewhurst. Any further questions or debate on this item? No? Thank you. Please cast your vote. That has been carried and we eagerly anticipate a approval for that one from the State Government. Thank you. Don't we, Mr CEO? <laughs> Moving on, 13.2.2, the report on the petition... Oh, that's what we just did, didn't we? Yeah. I'm the wrong one, aren't I? That's why you didn't know what I was talking about. Because <laughs> I was reading the one above it as I did that. I think you did, but... <laughs> so. Moving on, financial activity statement, 13.5.1 for February 2024. Thank you, Councillor Dewhurst, to move that. Councillor, Deputy Mayor to second that. Councillor Dewhurst, Deputy Mayor, anybody else? I'll make sure I'm on the right one. Thank you. If you could please cast your votes. I think I had that in my head to say last one. And you just ignore me. Like, oh, thank, <laughs> uh, thank you, Councillors. That has been carried. Uh, moving on, 13.5.2, the payment of accounts for February 2024. Councillor Adams to move that. Councillor Baines to second that. Any questions on this item or debate? Councillors, please cast your vote. Thank you. Moving on. Thank you. That has been carried. Item 13.5.3, the mid-year budget review for the period ending the 31st of December 2023. Councillor Good to move that. Councillor Lloyd to second that. Councillor Good, do you have any? Councillor Lloyd? Anyone else have anything? No? Councillors, please cast your vote. Thank you. That has been carried. Uh, item 14, there are no motions of which previous notice has been given. There is no urgent business, no confidential matters. Declare the meeting closed at 